Yeah, baby. Oh my gosh. I just smoked a giant. Genesis 27.3 Now therefore take, I pray thee, thy weapons, thy quiver, and thy bow, and go out to the field and take me some venison. This was Isaac talking to his son Esau. Before Isaac was about to pass, he wanted to share his blessing with Esau over a meal of venison. Even as far back as the times of the Bible, venison has been important to the human race. So now, join me and my blue collar team as we chase giant whitetails across the Midwest. Our goal is to make you a better hunter. I'm Ben Rising, and this is Whitetail Edge. Thank you, God, Jesus Christ. This amazing dream. Yeah, baby. I'm about to go lay my hands on probably the biggest buck I've ever shot. I just spoke to Sheriff. Yep, he's going down, sis. It's a beautiful buck. I couldn't be more happy to take him back home to Indiana. There he is. Oh my god. I just smoked a giant on a Black Widow mock scrape, baby. <laughs> yes. Welcome back to Whitetail Edge, episode two, season six. On this hunt, you're gonna be following me, myself, here in Ohio. This is a deer that I've got some serious history with. We've been watching this deer grow on this little parcel of ground for some time now. I'm estimating this deer to be five and a half, six years old. There's only one reason this deer has actually lived as long as he did, and that was because of co a correlation of some neighbors of passing this deer up when they had the opportunity to shoot him when he was younger. Without the neighbors doing the same thing and us doing the same thing, he never would have got to the age that he is or the size. So this deer, we call him forks, we call him splits. It just depends on how we feel that day because ever since this deer has been little, he's had split G2s. And he's an awesome buck. He's always been in this area. But the thing about this deer is he never comes to my little parcel and this parcel that i can hunt is 99 acres and it's solid woods and it's got a, a valley right up the gut of it hillsides with some little bit of white pine some young soft maple a lot of green briars and it's got a hillside of oak black red and white oaks scarlet oaks that you know kind of produce a lot of acorns with bedding and some rocks it's not something crazy for deer it's just it's a spot that when the pressure gets on this buck seems to find sanctuary on this little piece I can hunt. I thought he had made it through. I'd heard his sheds were found. Um, and I thought, you know, this deer should be here. But again, I had to keep telling myself, you know, sometimes this deer doesn't show up until he starts feeling the pressure. So let's fast forward here to end of September. I'm getting ready to make a trip to Illinois to hunt a little early season. But before I go, I'm gonna slip into this farm where Splitty frequents when he's around and move a camera, start a mock scrape again, and see if I can't pick him up. So maybe when I get back from Illinois, I might have a chance at killing this deer if he's around. Hi, Ben Rising here with Black Widow Deer Lures. On our show, Whitetail Edge, we're always looking for that one little thing to get the dupe on a big buck. For us, it has become Black Widow Deer Lures. Yes! Yes, baby! Oh my gosh, that's him. Yeah. I'm gonna just freshen it up just a little bit with some branch butter. Alright. Oh, I smoked him, dude! Black Widow Deer Lures, never brown or broken down, always fresh. So I slide in here on a Saturday morning. I hang my Novix tree stand up in this hard maple tree. I make a mock scrape and I freshen it with branch butter. And this is the spot 
that any time that Splitty comes into this farm, I'm going to get him right here. But I've got to use a non-cellular camera here because it's such a deep valley. I don't have any service in here. So after getting my stand hung, getting the camera done and the scrape made, I'm out. I'm headed to Illinois and I'm going to check this when I get back. You know, I was only out in Illinois for a few days. I checked my camera, no splits. I decide, you know what, I'm going to keep freshening this scrape up. I can see deer using it, just wasn't splits. He wasn't there. So I put some more branch butter in there, freshen the scrape up a bit, put a little, you know, dominant dominator in the scrape, more mature buck lure. And uh, just to see if maybe that smell, if he's around, he's going to come. Well, pretty warm today, but there's a shift in the weather. A little bit. And that's why I'm in here. First, I gotta put my face on. On the 12th of October, we had a little bit of a front come in with some rain. And I felt like, okay, this could be an opportunity for me to, you know, to eventually check this scrape. They're gonna wanna check that scrape if they're around. They're gonna wanna freshen it up. So on the 13th, <clears throat> next day after it's done raining, I go in there and I check this camera and man, to my surprise and to my delight, they're splits. He's working his scrape and he's telling everybody I'm here. I'm feeling really confident about the move I'm about to make on this deer. And where I'm getting his picture is literally 25 yards from a tree stand. So here it is, October 14th. I'm pretty jacked up. I'm gonna to try to slide in and hunt splits this evening. You no, know, I know that I can get in this valley. It's a little bit tedious because the deer bed and they're looking down. I like top access farms. This farm is a bottom access. It's the only way I can get into it, at least to this stand. But I got a mowed trail going back so far. It'll get me pretty quietly to where I need to be. So I'm just gonna to tiptoe in there. I'm gonna get up in my tree and I'm gonna sit tight. camera mounted here for a second but I'm filming myself today I'm going in to hunt 
and I made a mock widow or a, a mock widow. I made a black widow mock scrape in here a couple days ago, and I checked this camera two days ago, and I had this buck in here that I'm after. He hasn't been here all year. All of a sudden, he just started showing back up. Um, so I don't know if the pressure is putting him back in here, but I've always had him in here years past. We've been getting pictures of him for years. Well, he just came back in. I slid in here this morning and checked the card on this Spartan camera. Um, I have a non-cell in here because of this valley. I can't get no service down here, and I don't have antenna on it, a big one. So I checked the card, and that sucker was on this scrape in daylight. So I am back in here. Um, he was on this thing at daylight yesterday evening wasn't back in all night so I think he's bedded close he's gonna come back in this evening and hit it again um, I think he feels comfortable in here so I've got a sketchy wind it stands right down here I'm gonna freshen this scrape up and I'm gonna get in my tree um, but I'm by myself because I didn't want two people in the tree I wanted to keep my scent as low as possible and uh, just try to the wind swirling in here it's sketchy I don't normally hunt valleys in the evening but I'm gonna try it but I can show you what this bedding area looks like up here. In years past, he's always bedded up here on this bank right here. And so a lot of times he'll come right down this valley. But I've got a, a trail that I mow in here every year into this valley right here, just so I can access this valley. Um, but they'll run this valley up and forth and make all kinds of scrapes in here. But all I did was just fire a scrape back up and get it going. And I'm gonna put some, and I put some dominant buckler in it the other day and it got them all fired up. So I'm gonna do the same thing. It's probably making him angry. He's gonna come down here and he's gonna wanna see who's in his area right here now. Cause he's done pushed all the other bucks out of here that was in here. I'm hunting low in the evening, which is not typically something I like to do. So I've really got a bank on two things. My scent control using the phase and my Black Widow scent. Because I use the Black Widow deer lures mixed with my phase to try to do, you know, a little bit of cover scent and my scent control. I'm gonna freshen up this mock scrape on the way in going to get up in my tree and I'm going to sit tight and hope for the best. The hunt could have been over right here, okay? I've got does above me. Sounds like three, four of them walking around up in there. And one of them actually blows, okay? And I'm like, oh man. And I don't care how good you are, or how much scent control you use or whatever, humans stink. It's just all there is to it, we stink. And it's almost impossible to cover us up 100% or eliminate our odor. We can do the best we can, you know, the phase system, using the foam, getting in the stand, wiping the foam on me, you know, putting the lotion on, trying to seal your skin, keeping your clothes clean. You can only do so much, you know, your breath stinks, but you can do the best you can. And sometimes these deer are just so edgy and so cagey that they can just pick you off. So the second that that deer blows and is not feeling a little bit because the wind's swirling in there and I knew it was going to happen, but I knew I had to take the chance. The second she starts doing that, I instantly just grab my doe matriarch. It's an adult doe lure, the dominant doe, and I just start spraying it in the air. You can see it on video. This is the honest to God's truth. After about probably 15 minutes of this ordeal of these deer trying to peg me, trying not to be, you know, they weren't sure what's going on because as soon as I started spraying that lure, and you can see, the, you can see it going through the air, and the second that it gets to them, they just start calming down. After about 15 minutes, I get a doe, adult doe, lays down 20 yards from my stand on the side of the hill. She's just laying there. She beds right downwind of me, and it's incredible because if those deer would have blew out of that country or made all kinds of ruckus, blowed, went up the hill, this whole hunt would have been over.
And these deer fed past me down the hill, and this doe is still laying there. Eventually, I got little bucks coming in, crossing the creek. They're down there messing around, getting a drink, starting to spar, fight a little bit. I mean, the woods is coming alive. It's just one of those nights that you just die to be in the timber. just one of those nights that you just die to be in the timber and I just knew I just knew that I was gonna see splits I just had this feeling and I'm just sitting there just enjoying the moment thanking God that I'm a bow hunter that I'm blessed enough to be healthy enough to walk in there climb this tree and look at all this and it's not long I look up on the hill in the bedding area where I figure splits is at and I can see a tree just going back and forth back and forth back and forth and I'm like that's got to be him. But man, the second I saw him, I knew right then I'm shooting this deer if I get the chance. So I was instantly in kill mode. comes down he starts pushing them does around he's grunting feeling dominant you know the other deer kind of paying attention to him and he kind of pushes him you know to the south a little and I'm like man you know he's out of my roundhouse right now but I'm like there's nowhere for him to go he's got to come back holy smokes he came right from where I thought he would but I thought he'd come a little bit more to my left and walk past me but he off the hill too far that way I'm hoping he's just gonna follow them toes I'm 
this around, then he'll come back this way, work this scrape, and maybe I'll get a shot. But I am covered up in, I'm covered up in deer in here. I'm right in the bedding area. These deer work this hollow and head out to the bigger fields. Finally, I grab my extinguisher and I just grunt back. I grunt at him a couple times and he heard it. He didn't do anything right away, but I saw him flick his tail. And I knew right then that he heard it. When they flick their tail like that, they hear it, they'll make the decision, they'll make the next move. And sure enough, he's once coming, he he's coming. was done fooling with those does, which I knew he would be because it was too early for them to breed. They weren't going to breed yet. They weren't ready. <clears throat> and of course, here he comes. And I knew right where he's going to come. He's going to come right to that scrape. Yeah, baby. Oh my gosh. I just smoked a giant. I just smoked a giant on a Black Widow mock scrape, baby. Yes, yes. Oh my gosh. Yeah, yeah. That is a giant. Me and Wyatt have been watching that deer for five years. We've been watching him grow from a baby And he's been missing all summer. And now all of a sudden he just showed back up yesterday. Two days ago on my camera. And I had a still camera in here. I couldn't come in here. I didn't have a, a Spartan cell. I had a Spartan still SD because I couldn't get service in here. And I finally went in and checked it. And he was working this hollow. So I made a mock scrape. Put a camera farther out the hollow a little bit. There he is. <laughs> Oh, that is, that deer's way bigger than I thought he was when we got the pictures. He didn't seem like he'd been growing the last couple years, but man, I think he's growing. He is a giant buck. I'm talking body, everything, giant buck. And I just laid his butt open with a mega meat. Oh yeah. I can't say enough for my old prime. This is the new black one. Man, I'm gonna tell you, I got some of the best sponsors in the world, dude, I just do. I've got my boys at Rogue, my family at Cobra, my Black Widow family. The Black Widow deers, or Black Widow lures just killed that buck. The phase system being in this hollow all evening with deer all around me, wind swirling. You're not supposed to hunt bottoms in the evenings, but I was. I knew I was going to kill this deer tonight. I just knew it. Oh my gosh, so much went on. The old HHA single pin, everything just 
coming together. My mossy oak. Oh man. I watched him come out of the bedding area. Once he showed back up, I knew where he was. And luckily, I slid a stand in here about five, six, seven days ago. Because I'm like, he's got to show back up at some point. And I slid a stand into this tree in this bottom. Oh my goodness. It's October 14th today, I believe. And that is early to kill a giant buck. There's a little doe. Come here and look at that. That's the last scrape that deer's ever gonna work. But look at this. You go in here and start getting those scrapes fired back up and they just can't resist it with that branch butter and that black widow scent. They can't take it. I started putting dominant buck in it and it was pissing him off. I knew that when he followed those does, those does off, I knew they weren't going to be ready, but you could hear him grunting. And uh, I knew that they'd just, he'd just leave them eventually and he'd come back here aggravated and work this scrape. And thank God he did. That's exactly what he did. I gotta try to figure out where he's, where he ran to here. Yeah, baby. Literally, for just a little bit, I didn't have a lot of blood, but you know, the distance from where this deer shot and where I did, where I shot the deer and where I found first blood was literally only 15 yards. That's a great sign. So. Because, you know, when you're filming yourself, you can't watch what's going on. You know, you're like, in the way the tree was, I couldn't see. So, there's blood right there. He went this way. This is where it's real important to just take it easy. I gotta calm myself down here because I'm in a lot of tall grass. You can see this thick valley right here. So, I just gotta take my time. There's blood there. So, just, again, right there's the scrape. It's just right there, literally 30, 30 yards maybe. He's coming up this hill right here. Across this road, or Over there. There's the red. I think we're up here. Holy smokes, dude! You got to be kidding me! That thing didn't go nowhere. I mean, my stand is right there. That big yellow tree is my stand. Holy smokes, yes! Look at this deer. Oh my gosh. Dude, look at that. This thing is a tank, man. Oh, what do you say, buddy? Oh my gosh. Look at that. Oh, thank you, Lord. What a stud. Look at that deer, boys. Oh my gosh. He's so pretty. Oh my goodness. It has been such a pleasure to watch this deer grow over the last couple years. And to what they can turn into body-wise and everything, it's unbelievable. If you just give them the time. Look at that. goodness craziness pure craziness thank you Lord unbelievable beautiful deer just a gorgeous buck I couldn't believe it he's just laying in the middle of the trail belly up deader than a hammer laced open blood everywhere um, just bigger than life it was awesome I mean because he literally didn't go nowhere I mean, I didn't even see him fall. I don't know how I didn't see him fall, but I just didn't see him fall. So I rolled him over, and you can see in the video how he's angled away. I shoot him kind of quartering away, bam. 
because I got to drive it through into his lungs. And it come out, I'm talking a three blade, two inch. And it pushed through, through his shoulder on the other side. Look at that. That is impressive. That is really impressive. Looks like the Mega Meats are doing their job this year. So let's recap here. We're in mid-October, what everybody considers the October law. The thing here that I want to stress to you is not every situation allows you to be able to get on a deer. Absolutely not. But there's that special occasion once in a while that you can have the right kind of access, you can know where a big deer is bedding, and you can dupe them with a mock scrape like this. And kind of knowing the area, the terrain, and how the animals use it to your advantage, you can put things together at times where you can take advantage of a situation like this. So the second that this deer shoot, showed back up into this bedding area, and me knowing from years prior that he really only came in there when he started feeling the pressure, I just monitored that. I took advantage of that situation of my past knowledge, used the cameras to tell me when he was back. I never penetrated it too much. I just kind of did my thing, and I relied heavily on that scrape to tell me the story. And this is where the Black Widow mock scrapes come into such play for me. But in this situation, using the phase system, staying as scentless as I can, using the Black Widow urine to kind of help cover me a little bit, enough to get those deer to bed down and not blow the whole night, gave me enough chance and opportunity to be able to harvest this buck. Thanks for watching Whitetail Ledge. Join us next week on Mossy Oak Go for episode three as we're back in Ohio again with a new team member called Shane Hamer. Shane kills a great buck, and it's his first buck ever for the Whitetail Edge show. So join us again next week right here on Mossy Oak Go.